Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tori and today we are working in my October daily on days or stories seven and eight. I did draw a material prompt today and that prompt was using paint pens. I've got a bunch of pictures pulled out here in front of me. Uh, when I was printing pictures, I was just printing the most. So I'm using uh, the pictures of my pretzels and my mugs and glasses and then everything else is going to be for a later date. Now I did show a card that I recently made. I would love to know in the comments below if you like watching card making videos because I love making cards and I share quite a few over on my Instagram and I'll have it like pop up on the video if you're interested in checking that out but I don't film too many process videos for those. So I'd love to know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in seeing from me because I will definitely make and post more of those if you are interested. So I left a lot in this video, more than I normally do. When I've been pulling prompt and theme, when I've been pulling material and theme prompts, I've been kind of stopping my camera, then going off and picking out all of the products that I want to use. This time, I just kind of went right into process, the process of everything. And I'm just very indecisive for a lot of this. I pulled out a couple paper person papers. I have some vellum pieces of paper from the Allie Edwards kit from this year. And now I'm just pulling out my papers from the album. I want to see how those paper person four by eight papers will look on the back of these ones. And I, I don't like it. I try to make it work for a little bit and I'm just, I'm not loving it. So I will end up putting both of these pieces of paper aside and not using them. I also pulled out a piece of just my plain white printable vellum, which is what I just had in my hand there, and I will end up using this. This is what I'm going to use to put my, my prompt on, my paint pens material that I wanted to use. I'm actually going to use this piece of vellum to create my title for day number seven. So for day, no, or story number seven. So for story number seven, I'm going to be documenting these Halloween pretzels. I got a kit from Target recently, and I'm going to be documenting the pretzels that I made with them. So it's like, it was pretzel sticks, little candy melts in green and white, and then it came with eyeballs and like chocolate nails, so you could make witch fingers and little ghosties. So that is what I'm gonna be documenting. I ended up getting some really, really good photos of the pretzels. Um, I made them before dinner so they were kind of sitting out um, for a little bit after I made them because obviously the kids had to eat their dinner first before they could eat the pretzels. So I pulled them over here to like my little crafting area where I take photos of my cards and stuff and my layouts and whatever whatever and that's where I took the photo of these and oh, I just love the way the photos came out. So for my title like I said, I am going to be doing that on a piece of this vellum. This is actually my printable vellum and I don't normally use this just for doodling on because it just feels like it's too expensive for me to do that with. Like I need to save it for only printing, but I it's, it's like a 50 sheet pack. So I need to calm down a little bit and I decided to just use it. Um, so I'm just drawing two lines around the outside as a border and then in a little bit here, I am going to hand letter the word spooky and then write in all caps underneath that treat. So we'll read spooky treats. Now I'm just kind of trying to see if I can actually make those paper person papers work the way that I'm wanting as like a full page. And I, I, like I said, I don't end up liking it. So here shortly, I will pick out some new papers and they will end up being some of the out of the page protector size pattern papers from the Allie Edwards kit for this year. I'm not sure if I mentioned it already or not, but I am using just Posca paint pens and I got this in a pack. Um, I don't remember how many's in it, but you saw me kind of sifting through them to look at the colors. I got them from Amazon and I will link them below if you're interested in them. I really like the smaller tip 
that these ones came in. I have seen some of the larger tips, but I tend to go for like smaller tipped writing utensils. Like my favorite pen um, is a like a needle tip pen that I use. And I think I like the Energel Pentel, Pentel Energel pen, whatever it's called. It, I link that in the comments always too, because it's my favorite pen. Um, so yes, now I am finished with my actual piece of vellum. Well, I'm almost finished. I will come back and add a little bit of yellow to that as well. Um, but that's not going to happen right away. So I'm finished for now. And these are the two new patterned papers that I pulled out and just look at the difference. I think that the muted background of this moon and star paper looks so, so much better with my photos and with the vellum title page that I created for this as well. I'm so much happier with this than I was trying to use those missized papers. Um, well, not missized, but the size that wouldn't really work with my album. I'm, I'm just much, much happier with the way that this looks. Now I will pull that orange paper person paper back in and I'm actually going to use that to create a little border around my photos. For whatever reason, when I laid this down, I laid it down just wacky. I don't know why I didn't lay them both down the same way, which would have been this way. Like I should have laid them both down the way I'm laying this particular photo down. I don't know why I didn't do that, but I didn't. So now my paper is just cut all super wacky. I am going to pull out my paper trimmer and I know I've mentioned this in a video before, but I have a lot more subscribers now and I just feel like it's a helpful tip. With the We Are Memory Keepers paper trimmer, I find it's kind of hard to get an even border around your photos. So what I like to do with this is actually line the photo itself up with the edge of the clear like finger guard and then trim it like that and it will give you an even border all the way around and even if it's not perfect it's close enough that like it's not noticeable to the eye that there might be you know a couple sixteenths of a difference um, so if that helps you great let me know in the comments below I think it's a super super helpful tip especially with that particular paper trimmer just because the finger guard doesn't actually go all the way to where the blade meets this little embellishment like photo tray that I have out right now, I need to figure out something else to do with this because just even looking at this on camera j just gives me anxiety now. Like I need, to, <laughs> I need to figure out something else to do with that. I'm thinking that I might need to actually just pull out all my October daily stuff and put it in like a craft cart or something because I was so anxious and overstimulated while I was filming this particular video because... It was just everything was such a mess in my crafting area and I was just dropping things left and right and just it was messing with my brain. So if you notice anything like that, that's why I was overstimulated and there was just too much going on and too much laying around me. So I'm thinking I might actually pull out all my stuff maybe this weekend and try and get it all organized in like a craft cart or something so that that doesn't happen anymore because it did make this one a little bit less enjoyable but after I finished this particular story I was much happier because I love the way that this came out. So what I'm doing now is I just pulled a tag um, out of the Studio Calico kit. This is the little ephemera tags that came in the Studio Calico kit for this year and I'm going to use that as a little teeny spot for journaling that's just going to tuck behind one of my photos. I am using red line tape again just to adhere the outside of where I want my tag to sit so that those areas are nice and sturdy and I didn't cut this like I normally do either where I just am struggling with this red line tape. I can never get the backers off of it and it just drives me crazy. I really like how sticky it is and how good it keeps things adhered together but like the backers on them it's too much. <laughs> um, I think I always end up stabbing myself with my tweezers because I'll always end up having to bring my tweezers out for one of them because I'll start ripping my paper trying to pull the backers off. So I finally got that done 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and start getting my photos adhered down. And then I will move on to kind of figuring out how I want my numbers to look for this day, deciding on what number that I would like to use. I did pull out the gold Allie Edwards numbers that I've been using um, on some of my past stories so far for this month. But it just, like the gold didn't feel like it fit with the spread to me. It looked a little too, it, it, it stood out too much. It didn't really fit with the vibe. I also changed out that pumpkin chipboard circle with a little witch hat. I felt that fit a little bit better with the patterned paper in the background and my hand lettering. I just think it looks a lot better. So I'm going to pull out this black chipboard numbers. And you can see they're all kind of lopsided and stuff. These things have almost no stick on them anymore. And... I want to just get them used up because every time I take them out of my little like number sticker tray, they're all over the place and all sticking on each other. So I want to get these used up. So I'm actually going to use this style number in both story seven and story eight today. I won't be able to use it for story 10, but I do have a nine in there. So I might be able to make that work for story nine, but we'll see because I think I have another idea for story nine too. Anyways, besides the point, I'm going to tuck that seven right into the little kind of corner that my photos make overlapping each other and that's going to be on the bottom so you'll be able to see that kind of muted a little bit with my vellum and then on my vellum I am sticking that chipboard witch hat I also you won't see this on camera because my camera stopped filming but I did also stick just a circle die cut on the back of that chipboard witch hat as well just so that when you flip it over to see the stuff behind it and pull out the journaling you're not just seeing like tape stuck behind there when I get to the end and I do like my little everything's back in my album shot I will flip the page over and you'll see it's got like a little moon on it that matches the pattern paper really well as well So this is pretty much it for story number seven. I'm getting my holes punched and then I will kind of set everything on top of each other and set that to the side and start working on story number eight. And I did notice, well, as I'm listening to myself speak, I am noticing that my voice is still super like raspy and cracky. So once again, I apologize for that. Hopefully it's not too disturbing to anybody's ears. I don't like the way it sounds. So I feel like I need to say something about it. So hopefully it's not bothering anybody. I'm sorry about it if it is. Um, but yeah. So we are moving on to story number eight. And for story number eight, this is going to be a super, super simple story. I'm pulling out this piece of my Epsom premium presentation paper, Matt. Um, I printed out a bunch of my... One of my future stories, this is going to be story number 10, I believe, and then some pictures that I printed out for my October memory album pages. And I'm going to trim my photos down just a touch so that they fit on top of that pattern paper that I printed out. I don't know if you'll be able to see it too well on camera, but it's like a really, really light grid pattern. And it's from a Paisley Press digital kit. I don't remember off the top of my head which kit it is, but I will link that below if you're interested in it. So what I'm documenting is my current favorite coffee mug and my current favorite wine glass. And both of these, I believe I bought last year. Um, so, and I'm, they're, I'm still going strong. They're still my favorites. I love this little gnome <laughs> coffee mug so much it brings me so much joy I love drinking my coffee out of it it's just adorable it's my favorite so I am putting that one on there and this wine glass I got from home goods I think and it's got like a metal skeleton hand like wrapped around the base of it and the actual wine glass itself is black and it's just it's got all the Halloween vibes and I just love when I can take this out and just have a spooky glass of wine. It's just, it's fantastic. So these are my two favorite like beverage containers, if you will. 
So I'm going to tape those onto that printed out pattern paper and then get that adhered to my page. And then I will, I believe, set my eight on here just so I don't forget to grab that. And I will work on looking through all of my alphas, all of my alpha stickers to try and figure out which alpha I want to use for my title. And for my title on this one, I couldn't figure out what to title it. I didn't know if I wanted to do, I didn't want to do favorite mugs because obviously one of these is a wine glass. And I didn't want to do, you know, favorite glass because that just sounds odd. So all I did was just write favorites. Um, and so that's going to be my title for this page. I'm not doing any journaling because I feel like it's a pretty self-explanatory spread. It says favorite and it's got a mug and a wine glass. Like I think, I think it's self-explanatory that they're my favorite mug and wine glass right now. I am using a white alpha from Studio Calico. This probably came in one of the subscription kits. I don't know. I just have them all stacked together because I don't use them hardly ever. And I really need to start using them. So that's why I pulled it out to use in this page. So like I said, I'm going to be writing favorites. I'm just sticking these to my acrylic ruler that I have to try and get them as straight as possible without being overly perfectionist about it. So I like to use when I'm doing when I'm using sticker letters, I like to place them on this ruler because then I can kind of move them around and kind of space them out evenly before I stick them on my page. And then I will just kind of move the ruler on my page to figure out where I want that word to sit. And once I find that where I want that word to sit, I will just press the tops of those letters down into the page and kind of fold the ruler up so the rest of the letters pop off of it and then everything is just exactly where it needs to go. And you'll see me do all that right here. I did pull out a label to see if I did want to add a label, but then I was like, I'm using white stickers. That's not going to work because you won't see it. <laughs> so I'm figuring out where I want to place it. I'm pressing the tops of those down and then just folding my ruler up and it releases the stickers and then voila, I've got a decently straight line for my title. On camera, my title itself looks a little bit difficult to read against this background, but because this background is like a grayish brown, like a really light grayish, um, it's, it's not as difficult to see and read in person as it is on camera. But looking at it on camera, I think I might get my Posca paint pen and just outline it potentially just to make it pop a little bit more and add just a little bit of black around that too. I think that would be super helpful. The last thing that I am doing on this page is adding a couple of my word phrase stickers and I'm going to be doing boo to you on my wine glass picture and then up at the top on my no mug I will just be using the sticker that says autumn. I didn't have too many stickers that really fit like drinks or anything like that at least in the orange or the black so I just went with general season specific type stickers so they still made sense um, but didn't actually have to have anything to do with what the photos were. So this is it. These are my two finished stories, story seven and story eight. I'm going to go ahead and get those back in my album. Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are. If you like either of these, which one is your favorite, story seven or story eight? <laughs> um, if you made it to the end of my video, leave me a moon emoji in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.